Good morning, everyone. I'm Muriel. I work at the University of Galway on the west coast of Ireland. I've been in Ireland for 20 years um, and I'm a lecturer in, in biochemistry and, and uh, science communication. And I'm going to present some of the work we do here with the Selectborough group that has been started in the university. So we are an education outreach program based in a university. We aim to inform, in, inform inspire um, uh, and involve young people um, in science, mostly modern biology, because that's where we were based in the biological and chemical school um, uh, science here and we aim at mostly um uh, of course bring some knowledge but also combat stereotypical images that might prevent young people um to consider uh, uh, to continue to study stem or engage in in uh, in a stem career and so we would like to change perception on um an attitude towards science and and scientists um so like in many other European countries, we hope to contribute to, towards addressing the national shortfall of science graduates. Um, but we also train the next generation of science communicator or educator in the country because um, of our working model. Mure. So we disseminate outreach and public engagement. Mure, the presentation, activity. we can't see your presentation anymore. Oh, OK. Can Wait. you share the screen again? Yeah, I'm going to try that again. This is telling me I'm sharing, but okay. Thank you, Marie. We can see it now. Is it okay again? Yes. Brilliant. Okay. I hope I'm. I don't know what I did, but um, so um, I was talking about our working model and we disseminate this activity and the program is based on volunteering by staff, but mostly our university students um, who disseminate this activity. And we also have project students um, at the University of Galway that create new educational resources that the program can use. And since the beginning, we evaluate everything that we do um, through um, uh, science education research. So the program benefits society, um, the university and our students, and it's been created to fit in the higher education context to, to, to be able to do more STEM engagement with the public and the young people in Ireland. So our ethos is based on, on pedagogical best practices and research evidence, and I'm just going to mention three aspects of that. You have a, a, a schematic representation here on the screen. Um, so we provide we propose authentic science. The participant in our workshop do real science experiment using real laboratory reagent and equipment that they might not be able to access in school or at home. Um, in our session, each child does an activity and we have shown that the, it helped to increase their confidence and empower them into a participating in science. And we also provide opportunity for one-to-one -one mentorship in our session and every child has the opportunity to meet a real scientist, someone who wants to become a scientist in a meaningful way. So we started in 2012. We have 14 teams. There is 13 of these teams that are based in Ireland. You have a picture here in different universities. Um, and we have one team more recent in South Africa, in Durban, um, developing their practice over there. Um, so we propose visit to schools or use group uh, um, on their site, but it could so it could also be on the university campus. And we are active at regional and science festival, national event um, uh, as soon as we can. This week is National Science Week, so we the network is very busy. If you have a look at, tweet, um, uh, at Twitter, you can see the type of thing we do with, with the young people. And we do a lot of um, other activity here in Galway with specific partnership, and one of them is um, with Scientix. So we are really happy to be here today. Um, the network disseminates one one key session, which is called Fantastic DNA. That's a session during which young people prepare DNA from a banana with real tool. And since 2012, um, we have visited many schools you can see here on the map and directly do activities with 45,000 people, not necessarily with this session, but direct engagement with the public. Um, and we had um, 2,500 um, team members volunteering with us since the start of the program. So um, we have evaluated our activity and we know from our evaluation that um, we are a leading program in Ireland regarding education and public engagement um, where we, because we offer to work with small group and we have a very practical approach. 
Um, and what the children like is the fact that we provide authentic and autonomous hands-on um, opportunity for them to do science on their own. Um, we know that we have positive effect on children's science attitude and aspiration from what they tell us. They are more interested in science after our session and they, cons they consider more than before um, having a job that uses science. And teacher also um, tell, uh, tell us that we impact on children's science attitude. Um, and finally, the program supports ch children's social science capital, and I'm going to come back uh, 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 to that concept, um, because they meet a real scientist, and we know that for many children meeting our team member, 50% uh, of them have never uh, met a scientist before, or, they, or if they have, they don't realize they have. So in the recent three or four years, we've been, we, are, we try to be as inclusive as possible from the beginning, but we've been working on increasing participation of young people who do not engage in science or who do not identify with science. Um, and these, they, that, this lack of participation can be due to different reasons. Um, that can be due to geographical barrier. Maybe uh, young people would be located in a rural area. It could be socio-economical. It could be because the young people are part of minorities. Or it could be that people, young people are interested in science, but they don't see it for them because they don't um, see anyone like them um, being represented in the science field. Um, so how are we doing, how are we going to try to widen this participation? Well, we've created new activity, we have revised our practice, and we are engaging with a um, new partner. Can you still see my presentation? Because my computer... Has... We can, yes, yes, Marie. Yes. Okay, um, so that's how we do it. So I'm going to give you some example of what we have changed. Um, so uh, like everyone, the learning during the pandemic was rapid and it was hard, but um, we adapted quite quickly and um, uh, by creating, um, uh, switching all our practice online and creating two sets of kits, one kit for teacher that allow us to still do this fantastic DNA session in the classroom. So you can see here our presentation and we basically send a box to teacher and we can then join the, the class online and do the session this way. Um, and we also created a kit for families that um, allow us to run workshop online during a science festival. Um, so the kit is one part and then we connect with um, either class or families online through a kind of for an hour through a very structured um, session. Um, and you can see here the different phase, how it looks from our point of view, the scientist and how it looks on the screen and from the classroom or the, or the kitchen point of view. Um, so we can make this connection. Um, and so we still had the opportunity to interact live and be speaking um, directly to the people. And in particular with family workshop, we could move a small number of participants to be in one breakout room with scientists to have the opportunity to do the experiment and ask questions. So that has worked very well, but um, interestingly, now we are out of the pandemic and while a lot of school are and families are asking to, to for activity in person, we still have a quite a, a big demand for this online session. And this is um, because some of the public cannot, um, um, we can't travel easily. So we are still able to use, using this new um, uh, session to, to reach rural and faraway school or a public which cannot necessarily travel to a science festival. And we also notice an unexpected teacher empowerment using our box. We find that teachers who have done the session last year with us and uh, now feel confident to run it on their own without us using the resources that we have on our website. Um, so it's definitely a tool that um, allows us to widen participation. Something else we have done is to schedule revision of our practices and what we are trying to do is to focus on um, how can our facilitator engage meaningfully with the participant in, a, in their workshop. And what we have changed is to make them spend more time interacting directly orally, having a discussion during the workshop and improve their training. And all of these modifications have been done using three supporti supporting uh, a theoretical framework, one of them being the science capital teaching approach, which is an approach that has been uh, developed by the Archers Lab um, in UCL in London. And um, what this approach, the, this approach has been designed for secondary school teacher, but we are using some of um, the advice uh, in our session to try to impact 
science capital. And the science capital of uh, a young person is made, is kind of this bag where everything that connects them with science is kept. Um, and it's what they know about science, who they know in science, what they do in science, and how they think about science that fill up this bag. And um, uh, Louise Archer's group has shown that um, the, the lower the science capital, the less likely children are to pursue science in the future, to aspire at a science career. So it's so we have changed our practice to try to 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 fill up this bag and impact positively on science capital. And um, how does it translate it in our practice? Um, we want our scientists to engage as relatable science role model um, and actively dispel science misconception in their interaction with the public because that affects um, uh, how young people feel about science. So what we expect to change when we do that is uh, by exposing um, young people to the real world example of scientists, they can then identify characteristics of people that are doing STEM career or studying for this, and then find this characteristic in there, find this, they share this characteristic with, with scientists. And then maybe um, next they can feel that STEM career is for people like me, uh, and they can find increased confidence in ability to, to, to study science and keep this predisposition to, to positively uh, consider science in their life. Um, so something else we are doing, and, and that's a new project, and that's the last example I'm going to give you, is, the, is giving real opportunity to widen participation in STEM. And this is a project funded by the Medtronic Foundation in the US, and it's about bringing science to underserved students um, aged 10 to 18 years old. Um, and we are trying to work with young people that are at risk of not reaching their full potential. Be uh, and that can be due to different reasons. It could be due uh, to their um, um, isolation socially or rurally, um, having being confronted to mental health issue, being part of the Irish traveler community, which is a traditionally nomadic ethnic minority in Ireland, um, or being part of the um, asylum seeker or refugee community in Ireland. So to do that, we work with partners who know this population. This is absolutely essential. We trust their expertise in that. So um, we are different partners to do that. And what we will do is to propose two activities that have been tailored for this population. They work for everybody, but in particular, work, work well for the, for the group we want to work with. Um, and the two activities are, um, are a science club and an escape team. Um, so... Uh, the Science Club is a five-week program. We work with youth group. The youth group in Ireland are plan program for young people that enhance their social and personal development. Um, and we we work. One of the um, um, institution we work with is Foriga. Uh, they have like thousands of youth group in Ireland. And so the Science Club is a five-week program, one hour and a half per week. And there is an increment in the independence that the young people will engage with science. Um, uh, during this club, and uh, the aim is to increase their learning autonomy and empower them into doing science. And it ends with a showcase of what they've learned, not necessarily about science, but what they've learned about their own ability to do science um, with scientists and to perform well. And if you want to know more about this science club, um, Sarah Carroll, who has developed the the the, the setup um, has a poster, poster 86, and you can see um, have more detail about how this um, is working. We are also developed an escape room, an educational science escape room that is portable, that can play in the classroom, and that does not require any science knowledge to play. We propose that to Desh School, post primary school, which is um, their um, school delivering equality of opportunity. Um, and um, the, the escape room proposed authentic science. So it's a set of puzzles that you have to solve to, 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 to escape the room. Um, it's an equity, equitable experience because it's entertaining and immersive and you don't need any previous knowledge to do it. Um, and we have developed that um, together with our partner, so Forega and Dr. Ran Peleg, uh, who is an expert in educational escape room design. So I'm just I'm, I'm finished. I'm just going to conclude. This is what we 
have changed. And uh, like Alice, research is extremely important to demonstrate impact. So in addition to delivering this program, we are working on establishing best practice through evaluation re research of all of these activity. And um, we are trying to demonstrate program impact through discrete research study, in particular, seeing how the science club and the classroom session impact on the science perception and aspiration of young people. Um, and um, I would like to thank everyone and you for your attention and apologize for the little hiccup during the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Murray. I can see that your colleague is answering all the questions that are written in the chat. However, I have a question myself, if you allow me, please. I yes, don't know, I don't know, Murray, if you encounter, um, if you have students who have a language barrier in your programs and if yes how do you deal with that so that's a very good question and i think sarah in the poster on the science club is showing we are usually using technique that um as some of our collaborators have used so in particular we are collaborating with the kinder bureau in vienna in austria and this is a team of engaged who work a lot with young people and who also work with migrant children in the park of vienna and they are using very visual little cards where you can only see like a representation of the experiment and and um they are helping us to um to structure the instruction to the young people but basically if they have the card and the material they can nearly do the experiment themselves and you are just here to support and be positive and that's what exactly we are trying to do with the with the science club very good marie and are these resources available or so we have um, uh, things on our website, and if you are interested, you can contact us. Um, I think we will, um, uh, I'm not sure if the Kidna Bureau have put their card on scientists. Scientists, they might have because they are very active in Europe. Um, we, will, we are developing our own card, so I think we will put them on the scientists uh, repository, which is a great repository for, for everyone. But if someone is interested, they can email me directly and we can, have a chat. Thank you, Marie. Thank you.